Are you curious where people leave your site? And do you want to improve your site and retain the visitors on your site for a longer time? Well, in this video, I'm gonna show you how you can find the exit pages, the places where people leave your site within Google Analytics 4. And I'm gonna give you some tips on how you can actually use this information to improve the website that you're working on. Let's go. Welcome to the channel, my name is Leon. This channel exists to help you make better decisions in your daily work using your analytics data. I believe analytics is for everyone, not just for the web analyst, but also for the marketer, for the manager, for the UX designer, for the developer. Everyone that's working with a website can benefit from analytics to make better decisions and work more effectively. If you like what I'm doing, please click the like and subscribe buttons down below. That really helps me get this channel off the ground. Also, there's a playlist full of videos just like this. So if you're interested in uh, how you can create beautiful reports inside of GA4, definitely check that out. All right, let's dive in Google Analytics 4. We're gonna find the exit pages by going into Explore. And I really like to start with a blank exploration. Let's call this report Exit Pages and let's go ahead by adding some metrics first. So I'm gonna go into Metrics and I'm gonna add Exits and I'm gonna find Views. Under Dimensions, we're gonna do the same thing. So click the plus sign and find Page Path. The dimension Page Path plus Query String didn't work when I first tested it. So we're gonna add page path and screen class and I'm gonna import it. And my site is so small, so I like to make the date range a little longer so I get the most data inside my report. So now that's out of the way, we can go ahead and create a report here. I'm gonna call it exit pages. And the, the contents of this step are determined by what we fill in here in the second column. So I'm gonna scroll down until I find the section that says values. So I'm gonna say exits and I'm gonna say views. And if I'm scroll back up, I, there's a section called rows and I'm gonna add page path and screen class right here. By the way, there's a blank row here. There was a time in this time period where uh, exit pages were not tracked yet. Uh, it's relatively a new feature in GA4. So we can just ignore this row or I can decrease the time period for a little bit. Yeah, there you go. By default, it shows only 10. So I'm gonna increase the list to 100. And that's how you find all the exit pages on your site. So let's discuss how you can use this information to actually improve your website. Well, first of all, let's think about it. Everyone that enters your site will eventually also leave your site. So leaving your site is inevitable. The way you should think about it is you should think about goals. Did somebody perform a goal or not? People leaving our site is okay, at least if they performed their goal first. If they didn't perform the goal, that's when we get curious when they are leaving our site. So the first tip that I could give you here is now we've selected all the exits, we could filter out the people that converted. So we only get the exit pages from people that didn't convert. We can do that under segments and then we can create a user segment and then we can say not include, but we want to exclude users that in my case, and then I'm gonna just find my conversions, contact form submit uh, or training form submit. For some reason, this doesn't show up. So I'm just gonna manually create it here. These are the two most important conversions. I'm gonna exclude the users when they've converted. So this segment is called non converters. So I'm gonna Exclude the converters. Those are the 29 people that actually filled out the form. And the rest of the users, those are the people that I want to keep. So I'm going to save and apply. And the non-converted, the exits that they performed, that's what I can uh, view here. So the first tip is actually see the exits of the people that did not yet perform a specific conversion on your site. So the second tip that I want to give you is the exit pages report is very detailed. It's very granular. And granularity is not always better. More detail in a report is often more confusion. So it can be very hard to actually get something valuable out of it. So the first report that I would grab if I would look for ways to improve my site would be actually a, not this report, but it would be a funnel analysis. Because a funnel analysis lets you define all the steps that people go through before they need to convert. For instance, they view a landing page, they go through a form page, and then they go through a thank you page. Or for instance, they go into a product overview, product detail, a cart, a checkout, and then they purchase. And then that report shows you in an overview 
where the biggest drop off uh, actually is so you can uh, zoom into that step a little bit more so that would be another tip sometimes more detail equals more confusion and if that's the case if you don't find value out of this report perhaps it's easier to go into a funnel exploration instead of this report however if you want to use this report there is another tip that i can give you what i like to do is i do not always just look at the amount of exits but i want to look at the amount of exits relative to the amount of views and we can do that by going exporting this data into a google sheet so i'm going to import the data first of all i'm going to remove some rows so this row shows the totals i'm going to remove that also i want to analyze the non-converters so everyone that didn't convert so i'm going to remove the total yeah delete and this header at the top i don't need either so i'm going to delete it so we're going to keep a simple table that shows the page path where people exited and we also have the views and what i like to do is i like to do i like to press the equals sign that will give you a formula and then i press the exits cell and then i do a slash sign that says divide by and then i press the views cell next to it and then i press enter and that will fill out the rest of the column as well and then i select the entire column and i say i want to I mark this up as a percentage and i don't need two digits i just want to round numbers there you go this will show me not only the amount of exits but also the amount of exits relative to the amount of views because of course Pages with more views have more exits. They wanted to show me the pages where the amount of exits is actually higher than what you would expect. So the home page it is 46. This training page is it's also around 60, and the contact page is around 50. And then all of a sudden, at number five, there's a page that has 83% exits. So 83% of the people that view this site exit. This might be a red flag. So I can uh, go ahead and go into this page and put it on the screen. I could do two things with this page. I could just go ahead and just check what's going on here. Maybe I could add some buttons here. But what I also really like to do is just add a program like Holjar on pages like this. And that's really how I like to work. I like to start with analytics, find the pages that underperform like this one, and then add Holjar to give more insight on what's really happening. Holjar will give me, for instance, scroll behavior on this page, how people click, what people do. Do they actually read or, or maybe not? So that could be a tip. Find the exit pages that have relatively high exit and use Holjar to get more insights on those pages. Also, if you make this analysis, be careful that some pages that just have a, a very low view count. And then for instance here, there's a page that has just one view and everyone exited on. Then you have, of course, a high exit count. You should probably delete everything below 10 or 20 views from this table to make your analysis. Yes, so be careful not to go into pages that have like very little views. All right, that's it for today. I hope this video was clear. I hope it was helpful. If you have any questions, please leave them down in the comments below. Also, if you're interested in more videos just like this on how you can create reports inside of GA4, there's a link to a full playlist of videos in the video description, videos just like this. All right, have a great day and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.